Lana Del Rey's Did You Know There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard is her ninth album, um, just released last week in Indie Miners. We thought we'd wait a week after all of the hype and, and perform a little bit more of a deep dive review just, just to really sort of take a little bit in um, in terms of the album. Um, I think initial thoughts is that it is a really good album. Is it really too long? And I think that's the secondary question, Al. Um, good morning to you. Is there, is there actually a tunnel there? So before we get into all of that, um, what were your initial thoughts, mate? Yeah, good morning, mate. Look, I think it's an absolutely uh, fantastic album, possibly up there with the potential album of the year. I mean, the recent sales in the UK would indicate that, and the critics' reviews are probably going to indicate that it will be one of the albums of the year. I, I thought it was absolutely fantastic, mate, from the opening track, the grants, the title track, number two, the song featuring Father John Misty, Let the Light In, mate, there is a lot on this album. It is 16 tracks with two interludes, featuring a recording of a uh, priest or a pastor, I believe. You might be able to tell me a little bit more about that, mate. I'm interested in your thoughts because I'm, I'm really, really impressed by this. I mean, her ballads are fantastic. They always are. I'm a huge fan of the ballads. But she's got some different sounds on this, but it does come in at 78 minutes. So what's your initial reaction here, mate? Yeah, look, I, I thought it was a really good album. I mean, it, it's it's one for the people who love their, their ballads first and foremost, but there are sprinklings of other things in it. So that's what made me gravitate to this i think my first reaction is oh it, it it feels same same but different i think that probably is testament to, to lana's style so i know that she has i think polarized or or or, or certainly put a few of her bigger or, or, or long-term fans out by this album i've actually sort of looked at it as being look i think that the the, the ballads have been really well constructed that's obviously her strength but the, what I guess makes it interesting are things like the, these interludes, the, the priest interlude. Um, I, I, I know that that's one of your favourites there, Al. But also the, 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 the beat song as well as the Father John Misty song, that it is sprinkled with a, a, a lot of different things. Um, Al, I, I haven't listened to a lot of Lana um, just, just in, over the journey. Is this similar to what else that she she puts out there, do you think? Oh, yeah, that's a great question, mate. I mean, her ballads... Some might say are same, same, but for me, she somehow tends to reinvent um, on each album similar kind of sounds. She does love that 50s and 60s Americana kind of reflecting on those characters, both past and present, of course. But for me, the imagery associated with this album is just amazing. Like the title track, The Grants, which reflects on her her kind of family life. I haven't seen the film clip, but you could almost imagine like the show succession with the, that piano playing in the background and flash, flashing of the, the family against each other and all this kind of stuff. I mean, she's a really interesting character. She's gone through, in her early teens, um, she went through alcoholism and of course went to boarding school to basically get her on the right track there. So she's gone through some challenging times and that is reflected in her records but for me this album is a little bit different because i mean it features every tom dick and harry out there but every person on this album um whether it's father john misty or bleachers really plays their role really well but again is it too long i i, I don't know and that's going to be an interesting conversation for in the comments mate but for me it really is one of the albums of the year so far yeah, and, and I think that the, the question over is it too long. I, I look, I'm not sure what your thoughts are, but like I think that yeah, just generally there is a place for albums to be that length 70, 77, 78 minutes. Mm. It's a fair investment of time, right? I mean, you've got to sit down for that long to, to go through it. This day and age, I feel as if albums are better suited to that 30, 40 minute mark, if you ask me. Yeah. But and there's, there's probably three tracks at the end that maybe could have been released as as B-sides and then you kind of reduce it to 12, 12 exactly. songs and maybe one interlude. I, I don't know, mate, but I, I really exactly. toggle, toggle between both ends of it here, mate. And, I mean, Lana does what she wants. She's fucking writing whatever she wants. The yeah. lyrics are really interesting. So I don't know, mate. Yeah, I, I don't know. Look, I, I think that she has to be careful. I think she, she you're spot on. 
she seems to like to be like that bloody-minded character, so similar to your your Billy Corgans and, and other people who have come through. They just do what they want. I think that she might have to be careful with the volume she spits out. It's, it's, she, she comes across as a, a an album every year person and just wants to sort of spew out as much material as she can possibly um, write. But... I would have thought that the album could have been shortened. I mean, especially with some of the ballads. Ballads, the ballads were all good. I, I, I didn't mind them all, but that doesn't necessarily mean they had to be all on this album. I think that the the other parts to it, you know, so the interludes, um, some of the experimentation pieces, so the things that that um, she she does, like can, candy necklaces, she yeah. um, increases the tempo and then and decreases the tempo. Margaret, she does this sort of um, improvisation sort of piece I think that that really makes the album but I think what could have been cut is just the I guess the number of ballads and then I, I guess what that really puts the album up to be is almost a Lady Amazair album of the year what what do you think mate? Yeah I don't know this is where you and I might kind of disagree on this because I would struggle to when we're saying ballads which one would you kind of take off like for me the the title track um, which is the second off the album inspired by the line by uh, from Harry Nielsen let the light in I mean you, you couldn't take that track off it that is absolutely no. fantastic so which one would you bump do you split it into two albums I mean this is her ninth studio album at age 37 so I don't know but I think I think she's kicking goals I think she's going to be an artist that hangs around for a long time and she won't kind of fade away like the Tori Amos's of the world. I think she's going to be hanging around for a very long time producing quality records because her voice, A, is just so unique, but her lyrics are also just top quality. And if you see her live this year at Glastonbury, I believe, mm. I think quite a few of these songs will make it into her set list. So That'd be very I don't think she's going away yeah. anytime soon, mate. Very interesting. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see what that set list looks like. So mm. before we get into this, um, Al, look, I know you're, you're a massive Google Maps fan. Um, have you found this tunnel, mate? What, where, where is it? Um, have we got people who have taken pictures inside the tunnel? Um, look, give us the goss. Give us the lowdown. I don't believe that there actually is a tunnel under Ocean's Boulevard, but I did have a look, little bit of a look on the internet. It is somehow related to some sort of tunnel around the area, but our fans and those people who stumble across this video might be able to put a comment down in the comment section with some uh, fact checks there, mate. So look, look, I, I, I don't exactly know. Look, let us know in the comments. Al is a massive fan of map porn. So, Al, let's get into the ratings. What do you think out of five stars? I'm going to give it four and a half, actually. I was kind of toggling around the four mark, but the more I listen to this, the more this album just uh, grows on me. And the tracks that I didn't like initially, I'm finding that I'm listening to more and more. So it's now four and a half for me, mate. I could have possibly have got to five if it was maybe a little bit shorter, but I don't know how that could have been achieved by, by doing that. So I don't know, mate. What are your thoughts? I'm going to give it four and a quarter stars. I just can't give it nine out of ten, so that's four and a half stars. I think it is a contender for album of the year, so mm. definitely check it out. We definitely recommend it. Um, I just go back on the comments about length, and, and if uh, I think sometimes there is a, an argument for less is more, but definitely check it out especially if you've got a spare 77 78 minutes free time like uh like we all do these days so that wraps things up so that is indie miners latest review for lana del rey's latest album that wraps up another episode of indie miners please look to subscribe to the channel follow us on twitter and let us know if there's an album you would like us to look at so until next time bye for now and thank you for watching